They've peppered the city with savvy billboards and catchy slogans such as, it's not easy being right in Chicago. They are young Republicans, and they seem to be awakening a rare base of conservative young voters in the city. So what's it like to be right in this very blue town? Joining us tonight are three members of Chicago Young Republicans. Jeremy, Jeremy Rose is its president. Corrine Williams, the communications director, and Angel Garcia, the group's multimedia director. Welcome all to Chicago Thanks. tonight. Thank you Thanks for having us. Now, when we say young, both of you are in your mid-20s, yes. is that right? And, uh, and you look very young, Angel, but you're the senior member of this group at 35. Is there a cutoff for how old a, a young Republican uh, can be? 40 is the average age group for our group. Well, let me start with you, because uh, up until about last year, you weren't exactly meeting in secret, but it wasn't an organized group, right? It was a smaller group. Uh, we had about 10 people, 10, 15 people meeting regularly. And uh, last year, we picked up a lot of excitement uh, with the presidential election, and a lot of new people coming out, a lot of people realizing they weren't the only Republican in Chicago. And we decided to run with that and see what we could do with the group, and we've been growing by leaps and bounds ever since. So how did you become more organized? Were you reaching out uh, to well, the I campaigns? We, I think we reached a critical mass during the last presidential election cycle. I mean, uh, it was a historic election, so a lot of people came out, a lot of people wanted to get involved. And, you know, so people started coming to events that we're having, started coming to debate-watching parties. They started realizing they weren't the only Republican in Chicago. And, the, you know, one of the most frightening and surprising things that we, you know, kept hearing from all our new people is they thought they were the only ones. So they didn't do a Google search to find out how they can get involved. They didn't go to, the, you know, Republican Party headquarters in Chicago. They just assumed that there's no one else out there, so they don't talk to their friends at the bars or when they're playing softball. And so I think once we realized that that was what the problem was, getting new people involved, uh, we looked for ways to fix that. And that's where we came up with the marketing campaign. Kareen Williams, the, the membership has now exploded, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. It, it, at the time that Jeremy was speaking about last year, we had about 100 paid members. And through our marketing event, we've gone up to about 800 paid members. Um, we have thousands on our email list and our Facebook group. I mean, really just defying the idea that there are no Republicans in Chicago, especially and, not young And what do you attribute that to in this age group? Um, we attribute it to, you know, as Jeremy was saying, talking to our friends um, when we're out, just kind of spreading the word. Also, we directed it towards Facebook ads, you know, on the metro when you're there and you're like standing waiting for your train, you see the big ad, Dare to be Right in Chicago. I mean, that's gotten a lot of people our age, young professionals going to work and getting their attention. But as far as your philosophy, I mean, did you all come from Republican communities, from Republican families, and uh, this is how, what formed your, your uh, political uh, viewpoints? Uh, Angel, let's hear from you. Well, my parents weren't really involved in politics at all. I think they uh, had a very conservative nature where they distrusted the government, wanted to put themselves first and the family first, working first, um, immigrant type of background. Uh, but as far as being, you know, you're a Republican, I had not, none of that. So I had to be a self-made Republican in many ways. And so what made you a Republican? Well, I think uh, seeing that my parents immigrated here, they worked hard, they didn't count on the government for anything. I went to the University of Illinois. And uh, up to that time, I thought I was a Democrat. But then uh, I researched a little bit more. I go, you know what, limited government, uh, self-responsibility, uh, that's something I believe in. And that's when I became a uh, a Republican. We just saw one of your uh, your ads, I believe it's in the subway. Tell me about this campaign. Well, we um, we started realizing there was a problem. People, you know, thinking they're the only Republican in Chicago. So then what we did is we, we kind of brainstormed ideas to fix that. And we realized that it was a brand deficit we had. You know, people didn't know that there were Republicans in Chicago. So we pulled all our uh, members that had marketing backgrounds together. And uh, we're lucky enough to have a great group of member uh, members that come from the professional world that have a lot of different skill sets. We did a bunch of branding and messaging work and uh, figured out what it meant to be a Chicago young Republican, what the benefits were. And then we looked at, you know, cost-effective ways to get that message out there and, uh, you know, get some press and get, you know, a, a good bang for the buck and let people know that we exist. Well, what are the benefits in this very blue town? Well, I mean, you, you have, we do a variety of events. We do political events, we do social events, philanthropic events, you know, policy events. So basically anything you do with your friends on a normal day-to-day -day basis, you can do with the Chicago Young Republicans and talk policy, talk about things that are affecting your everyday life. You know, you can play softball, you can go to a happy hour, you can knock on doors, you can listen to some policy speakers from, you know, the Wall Street Journal, you know, et cetera, that we bring in. And, you know, one of the nice things is you, you develop a, you know, a good network of friends, you know, both for your professional life or your social life. Life, and you're with people that you can talk, you know, about your politics and not be afraid that someone's going to jump down your throat. Well, what about that? Did you find in your social circle, I mean, is it tough to 
come out as a Republican in this town? Do you, are, you, well, are your I've friends pretty, Democrats I've or been, Republicans? I've been pretty fortunate um, because I worked in Congress, so I was pretty labeled as a Republican when I moved here a little over a year ago. Uh, that being said, the majority of my friends here are Democrats, but they're very welcoming to the idea of you know having a Republican opinion. We've been I've been really fortunate with the friends that I've had, and through our marketing campaign, you wouldn't believe how many people emailed us who said, you know, I'm I'm a Democrat. I will probably always be a Democrat, but I saw your ads. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great way to market uh, new opinions in this city. So that was really encouraging. Well, give me your thoughts of uh, the democratic shift in this country, because obviously the, both Congress and, and the White House went to Democrats. Oh, Angel, give me your thoughts on, uh, on how you feel at this point with the direction of the country. Well, I think one thing is politics is cyclical. I mean, we look eight years back, we, you know, it looked like the Republicans are going to be in power for the next 20 years, but that wasn't the case. Now we look at uh, Barack Obama's poll numbers, and we see that now it's shifting. So America, we have a, a large percentage of Republican and Democrat, and it's the middle that really shifts the election. So uh, now the Democrats' time to show us what they have, and I hope. And that what ha what what do you think of what they've shown you so far? Well, I, I think we we've, we've seen the cap and trade, we've seen the, the health care, and right now it seems like the independents in the middle really aren't aren't following that, which is is great for for our party. Uh, now it's up to us to capitalize and have our leaders capitalize on that. Jeremy, how would you describe the diversity in your group? Uh, we've got a, a very diverse group. Uh, we, you know, our group's about 50-50 male, female. Uh, we've got people from every, every different ethnic background, religious background. And we do a lot with the ethnic media, you know, trying to you know, link up people that speak the native, native languages in the different communities, et cetera, and trying to reach out to different communities. But when you talk about ethnic communities and minorities, how, what are the numbers in the group? I mean, African Americans, Latinos, gays and lesbians? Um, we, I mean, we've, we've, got, you know, we've got gay members. We've got you know, a lot of Hispanic members. We've got Indian American members, Asian American members. Um, you know, we do have. You know, there's a, a large percentage of white, you know, m members. But uh, you know, at the same time, I mean, we're attracting people from every different community, and we're. And it's not like we're specially reaching out to different communities. We're, you know, we're reaching out to the entire city, and uh, we're getting a very diverse group. Um, that way. Now we should point out that you are the deputy campaign manager right now for State Senator Matt Murphy's gubernatorial mm -hmm. bid. But does the group endorse or uh, help out uh, candidates? We have a policy of not endorsing um, until after the primary, and we've stuck to that policy, and we will continue to uh, stick to it. Obviously, people like Jeremy and others in our group volunteer and work for for members, and. You know, that's a great way to get exposure to different campaigns, and it kind of opens doors that way. But we make sure that, you know, we don't endorse anyone. We give everyone the opportunity to come speak to our group. We've had several gubernatorial candidates as well as state senator candidates come and, and speak to our group, and we have an open invite to anyone who, who wants to talk. And if I can add to that, I mean, this is a, a reason why, why it's great to join our group. This is where you get exposure. This is where you start meeting and working in campaigns. This is one of the great things where if you're just someone wants to get involved, you join our group, and then the candidates come to you and, and start recruiting. It's a great tool if you want to get involved in politics. And do you expect to see any Republicans either voted uh, to the city council or uh, as, as a mayoral uh, candidate, uh, a viable mayoral candidate here well, in town? Uh, maybe not this coming cycle, but uh, you know, looking at the actual numbers, all we have to do is move the turnout from 17 to 23 percent in Chicago, and our candidates win statewide. So you know, it, we want to make some incremental gains, and if we can get the GOP turnout just up by about another 5 percent here in Chicago, it's going to make a huge difference on the statewide scene, and we can work backwards from there. Jeremy Rose, Corrine Williams, and Angel Garcia, thank you very much. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. Thank you.